I've got a backlight kit that I've been putting off the install on for quite a while now, and I'm not really sure why. I, I, I guess I just didn't really know which console I wanted to put it in. Uh, but anyway, I've got a perfectly working Game Boy Advance SP that we can't see if we can't see if we can't fix that. And um, got a brand new backlight kit here. So this is another one of those IPS kits for uh, Game Boy Advance. Uh, this one in particular is the one chip IPS kit for GBASP. So it uses the exact same LCD as the funny playing IPS kit, uh, except that the ribbon cable itself is functionally different. It's designed uh, with different hardware by a different company. And well, let's see if we can't see if we can't compare the two and see what's going on here. Um, so even though the uh, real quick though, even though the LCD is the exact same. It looks like they do have custom lenses, or less custom lenses, few, less cut, they're, yeah, they're still custom, just not as custom as the ones from Funny Playing. This one still has the regular, almost regular shaped cutout for the uh, screw posts and whatnot, but it's not just the flat top and bottom. Anyway, I'm rambling now, so let's get this going. Uh, this isn't going to turn on because there's no battery in it. I've been trying to get in the habit of actually storing my consoles without batteries in them. So, And excuse the background noise. Not Discord. Excuse that too, though. Um, I just fed my cat, so he has a fresh, fresh case of the Zoomies. Gonna pop this apart, same as any other Game Boy Advance SP. Six tri point screws on the bottom. Uh, I find the uh, Y0 bit seems to work best for those. There he goes. Alright. And these kits, by the way, they're Compatible with Game Boy Advance SP001 or 101s. In this case, this is just a 001. Once you got the six screws out, switch over to a J000 GIS bit. Three more screws holding the motherboard in. That thing almost went flying. Okay. And while I'm doing this, take a couple seconds to talk here. Um, when taking apart the Game Boy Advance SP, it's always a good opportunity to clean the shell, uh, clean out the buttons, clean out the power switch, stuff like that. I've already done that on this one. Uh, usually I just get fresh junk and then <laughs> clean them up after the video, but in this case I've already cleaned up this one. This one has been sitting around in my collection. Actually, I should take these out before they fall out. Set all this stuff off to the side. This one in particular, this GBASP is a, um, the color is called Mana Blue, um, or Surf Blue, I think, depending on the region. In this particular case, mine's from Japan. I imported this one, and uh, the specific color code for the one in my hand was uh, Mana Blue. All right. So I've got all that out, uh, after you got the motherboard and the rest of the buttons and stuff, there's just one more GIS screw underneath the uh, ribbon cable here, and that'll pop off the screw, or the, the ribbon cover, the hinge cover. And last but not least is the hardest part, I think, getting these rubber covers off without damaging anything. They're really not too difficult to get off if you don't mind 
if you're reshelling your Game Boy, they're a lot easier to get off because you don't have to worry about um, ruining anything. But my preferred method is to just stick a plastic tool in there, work it, work it around the periphery. And as you're spinning it around, you can kind of work it under and lift that up. You can certainly use a metal tool. Don't let me... Don't listen to me saying I like to use a plastic tool and assume I mean you can't use a metal tool. I just... The reason I don't like metal tools is because it makes it so much easier to um, damage either the uh, cover itself or put a dent in the casing. A ding. Alright, I'm having trouble with this one. I think my pry tool got stuck. I was bending. I'll just work my way the other way. There we go. And excuse my nails, I was doing some painting. I need another tool. The big ones are easier because they're bigger. The little one still get just fine. Let me uh, bring that down a little. This Game Boy is not like super clean, so I mean it's not the end of the world if I accidentally ding it or anything. But I mean I don't want to make it worse than it was. I don't have to. So I'm just using the tool in my right hand, the green one, to try and push the uh, cover around to expose a little, like a, a gap in the end where I can stick the orange tool in my left hand. And try and spin it around until I get a good grip on it. There we go. This one is actually one of the easier ones. Usually fights a little bit more. Okay. Once you've got that off, it's back to the J000 if you're taking apart a 101, or the Y0 if you're taking apart a 001. I don't know why they're different, but it's just been that way on every console I've seen. the screen I'm gonna go ahead and save this because it is perfectly salvageable um, I mean it's not it's not great maybe a new lens but it's way better than some of the other SP screens I have in my uh, parts drawer but as you can see the lens is still custom the cutouts aren't the exact same so I don't know why they're making custom lenses when they could just use uh, OEM ones, it doesn't really, I don't, I don't know why they do that, but nonetheless, here we are. So this will go in here, you'll probably want to take the uh, plastic wrap off, but I'll get to that in, in a minute. There it goes. Ooh, I'm going to fold that up. Okay. So that fits nice and tight, that's not going anywhere. And I believe we'll have to uh, make a couple adjustments here. So this side fits on no issues. 
but on the left side doesn't really close. There's an adjustment we need to make, same as the other IPS kit. So on the left side, where my thumb is, we need to cut out this internal wall here. If you're doing a clear shell, um, Godspeed. <laughs> but if you're doing an opaque shell like I am, it doesn't really make too big of a difference. Just stick some flush cutters in there and go to town. Cut all the ribs. Cut near the ends. Probably use Ooh. nothing broke. Okay, probably use a uh, box cutter to make this go smoother, but this is working fine. And that noise is just the tool slipping. Now that we can see, there's no marks on the outside. Just flex in here. I've heard that uh, you can use like banana oil, I think it is. Like, not literally from bananas, or maybe literally from bananas, but it's a separate product that you can purchase. And you can, like, rub that on the uh, wounds of the plastic to try and clear up, to try and hide some of the crimes you committed by cutting it on a clear console. Obviously, I'm not going to bother here, because, I mean, yeah, on the inside it looks horrific, but... You'll only ever see that if you watch this video, or if you happen to take this console apart. Chunks of plastic everywhere in my apartment. Nice thing about this mod, the uh, IPS mod in particular for SPs, is despite what you think about trimming the shell itself, on OEM consoles it is pretty much 100% reversible. Uh, yeah, there's still going to be these cuts when you open up the inside of the console, but they're not visible from the outside. And aside from maybe some durability issues, you know, don't drop your console, I guess. Uh, it shouldn't affect the console whatsoever because you can still... The um, lens itself locates the LCD and the LCD is attached to the lens, so... As long as those are attached like it's supposed to be, you're not going to have any placement issues either. That is if you ever need to restore it to stock or something. All right. Pretty good. Could could be better, but more than good enough. This will work better if we put this in here. Sorry, I keep spinning things around.
We want to give that a twist. This helps it with the repeated flexing. We just want to make sure that the twist is over there. And we also probably want to tape this down. I just want to do a test fit. So it still doesn't quite fit. I get too much further. I'm going to take this down. It's making me nervous. I'm going to use a little bit of double-sided tape that I have laying around. I could have used that big chunk, but in the off chance I need to remove this thing, I don't want to make my life too difficult. Stick that on the right side here. No need for insulation. The whole back of this is a ground plane. Now that that's stuck down, so it's still not quite there. I'm thinking I might need to break out the file. Let me uh, let me take off this. Before I go any further, I'm going to um, reinstall this hinge cover just to keep this screen ribbon in place. That is the one long GIS screw. The other long screws should be tripoint. looks like my issues are right between these two marks here, the actual LCD connector itself. So I'm going to file that down. I'm actually going to take a quick break to do that, clean up all this plastic debris, um, let the camera cool down, etc. I will be back in just a moment. I'm not sure why the last mod I did, the uh, funny playing version of this kit, I didn't need to, I don't know why I didn't need to shave that down on the funny playing version, but anyway, I just sat there with my needle file uh, for actually not that long, just whittling away at it, not too much. Uh, I didn't want to bring it down too low because then you'd be able to see it from the outside. But you can see I took it down about half the height that it was. And now, goes on just fine. So that is it for the top half of this. We just need to stick this foam in here and uh, stick this back on and screw it down. And we should be pretty much good to go to put this thing back together.
So without that foam, the, uh, the screen would end up, you'd be able to push on it. I can't do it now because the foam's in there, but it wouldn't, the foam is what's pushing it up against the front bezel there. So let's, uh, I guess let's continue with the install. Or before even continue with the install, let's do some tests because I haven't done that yet. So, oh, that's already pretty close. Set it to 3.7. Is that going to happen? Probably not. Close enough. 3.68. So this top connector, I'm 90% sure, is the negative. Let's, uh, I'm going to stick this in here, actually. All right, and now we can measure it easily. I think one of the connectors fell out. Nope. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for a game, uh, which is not in my Game Boy. There it is. We're just going to test with Pokemon Emerald because that's what I usually end up testing with. And let's try out the original screen here. And so front light is on. I know it's hard to tell all the lighting I have. But we boot it up, bring it in game here. Walk on out to the overworld and I'm just gonna save. So I don't have to keep doing that every single time. There we go. The game's pulling at 3.67 volts. It's pulling about 51 milliamp hours with the front light on, or milliamps, excuse me. With the front light off, it drops down to 26 and a half. Easy peasy. Let's try it out with the uh, new screen here. Probably would have made my life so much easier if I'd uh, tested this before putting it all in the casing. But you know what I should do? I should finish the install. Yeah, let's just finish the install. That way I can wire up the brightness switch as well, and we can test it on default and high low, whatever maybe. Yeah, let's do it. That way. Iron's making a noise I haven't heard before. I don't think it's melting anything. Okay. I'm probably going to end up throwing these buttons everywhere. So it does come with this extra wire right here. Um, should be good enough. It's significantly longer than it needs to be. And I'm probably actually going to end up using my own wire instead. Nah, we'll use this. I'm kidding. But, uh, for reference, that gets hooked up to the uh, brightness switch because without it, the brightness button does nothing. And just to verify what that is, I'm pretty sure it's TP5 right here. Nope. 
TP6. Nope. Well, let me first figure out which one of those is ground. Okay, so that's ground, which means that must be the button. Okay, it's this one right here. I don't know how well you can see that, so let me bring the camera. It is this one right next to the C67 label. Yeah. Right where my red probe is. It's, uh... I don't know what the label on that is supposed to be. I guess Q12B? Because C67 is this component right here. Yeah, that's Q12B. Or you could just use pad number two on this button or pad number four. That works as well. We will solder that. Sorry if that was out of focus. I'm going to bring that up and around, and then that's going to go on top of the ribbon. So I'm going to get this connected here. And I really wish there were some extra slack on this. It would make installing and soldering so much easier. So as is, we gotta like insert it and just kind of dangle it. But if I leave that tilted up, I think we'll be fine. Cause I lose all my buttons here. Okay. Yeah, this needs to be shorter. I'm going to cut this. Hopefully not going to regret it. Oh man, excellent. Cut it. Good thing I left a little bit extra. This is not 30 gauge wire, so I used the 30 gauge stripper on it. Ended up cutting off some of the wire. Or maybe it is 30 gauge, and I just, my stripper got a little hungry. Happens to the best of us. Okay. Tin that up. Tin that up. And that's that. And if all goes well, it should seat nicely too. With no screws in the way. Or a screw post or something. Install these here.
knocking shit over. All right. That is that. Let's try it out now. Bring that up a little. Is that the same setting? Those back on there. And on the default brightness setting, so I'm not going to touch the brightness button. Well, I did just touch it, but it's not going to change anything because it's not on yet. I'm just making sure all my buttons were proper. Oh good, that works. I was totally confident. Never had a doubt. Right outside, I already forgot what I was getting, but maybe I'll do a, um, a uh, picture over or something so we can compare the numbers. But on the default brightness, we're getting uh, about 115. Don't know what that is, or milliamps. I don't know why I didn't know what that is. Uh, but let's see where it goes from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so low brightness, 104, bring it all the way back up, yeah, all the way up there is what, 155, oh, nope, one more, 165, and it goes back down to 104, and the other one here, this one, the funny plane version, real quick, even though this defaults to the middle brightness level, if you press and hold the uh, brightness button, it'll go up to a secret high brightness level. This one doesn't do that. But if we power cycle this one, it should come back to the same low brightness. If we set it to high brightness, one more? Yeah. Power cycle it again. Should come back on in high brightness. So that's one of the cool things with this kit is that it remembers the brightness settings. You don't have to reset it every time if you like a, a certain level here. And uh, get these in there real quick. So let's do a quick test. I'm gonna run around here and see if it drops any frames like the Game Boy Advance version does. And I think it is. It's hard to tell. This isn't the best test. Um, to the naked eye, it does look better than the Game Boy Advance version, but again, I'm, I'm just having a hard time telling. It might be dropping frames, but if it is, it's not really that obvious, so I suppose it's a moot point. Let's try one more thing. Just swap this out for the Easy Flash out of my Game Boy. And we're going to try. Scrolling bars test in Game Boy mode. So this makes it a lot easier. Now there is going to be, like I've explained in the other video, there is going to be a quick um, dropped frame really when the LCD resets. Every 256 frames or something like that, every 250 something the uh, ROM does issue an LCD reset command, which no Game Boy handles gracefully. OEM, aftermarket, doesn't matter. None of them handle that gracefully, but this one seems to handle it pretty well. I think the original DMG kit handles it a little bit better because this one just drops a whole frame. And I notice it is um, 
Doesn't help when I'm moving my hand around. Let me bring the camera down. And you can just watch that for a wee bit yourself. When that S in scrolling crosses on the left hand side, that's when the reset command is issued. But you can see between then, it seems to, I don't know, it's, it's like the same thing I was seeing on the Midwest Embedded kit. It's not quite dropping frames, but it is a little bit jittery. That was gross, I'm sorry. Um, overall though, I think it's pretty good. I'm gonna have to end up, I'm gonna have to build another Game Boy Advance kit and uh, we'll compare them directly because the last Game Boy Advance console that I made, I don't have that anymore. Um, but otherwise, we're pretty much done with the install. Went pretty smoothly, I think. Um, the biggest issue looking at this, I don't know how well you can see this on camera, but the lens itself doesn't appear to be actually laminated to the LCD, which is either a good or a bad thing, depending on your point of view. In terms of repair, it's a good thing because it makes repair easier, but in terms of just overall looks, I don't know if you can see this, but dead center in the screen, maybe it'll focus. Maybe not. Uh, there's like the Newton rings that you sometimes see on like um, original Game Boy or Game Boy Pocket backlight installs with the polarizer. Those are called Newton rings. Maybe focus on that. Uh, sorry, it's it's really hard to pick up on camera, but otherwise. Beyond that, I think it came out really well. Uh, only thing left to do now is pop a battery in this thing. I'm gonna pop in one of my mod batteries here because this kit is going to suck some battery life out of this thing. If I were to put in a regular battery, but one of these should help out with that. Screw that down. And Bob Gianti. Yeah, just to, just to compare it, because this one is laminated. I don't know. Probably can't even see it on camera. Nonetheless, worked out really well. Um, I'm liking it so far. I, I still got to play with it a little bit more, but feel free to hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. Um, one thing worth noting, I didn't really pay for this kit. Well, I didn't really. I didn't pay for this kit at all. This was provided to me by Retro Game Repair Shop. Um, they weren't... I mean, the, the, this wasn't sponsored in any way. They just gave me the kit, and I made a video because I make videos on pretty much everything I do at my workbench here. Um, that's just the way it is. This is my own opinion. It's not sponsored in any way. I like it, but I still think the Funny Plane Kit is the way to go if you want to install a backlight. Um, but anyway, that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.